um, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Like I said, today we're working. It's up to you whether you want to listen or not. Have that book ready, throw those things that you need to throw, make sure that you can you get um, as much information as you can because of the train is moving now. So I guess, um, as I spoke on the previous session, that okay, we have what three different types of trend. We have an uptrend, we have a downtrend, and then we have what the horizontal trend. You understand? These three guys have their what has their properties. You understand? Different properties they behave differently within the markets. That's the thing that I spoke about on the previous session. So now what I want to tell you guys now it's because I told you about the trend, but I didn't specify a lot. I want to introduce you guys to what we call a valid trend. Instant. And I told you guys that again in the previous session that okay, a trend it's only going to be confirmed when it breaks a previous structure. So an uptrend for you to know that this thing's an uptrend, you have to see this breakout. You have to see this breakout in the downtrend. You have to see this breakout. You have to see that it's a downtrend. This breakout confirms that okay, it's a downtrend. Simple things. Uh, I said looking for these two guys here. So now we have what you call a valid trend. What is a valid trend? A valid trend is a correct trend. How do you identify a correct trend? A property of a valid trend. Properties of a valid trend. Just okay. We need to have first touch. First touch. You need to have your what? The second touch. And then you need to have your third touch. Understand? That's what I, I mainly um, look for within a very trend. Like I said, a very trend has what? Um, first touch, second touch, then third touch. Understand? So let me talk about this thing. Here you need to listen, guys, because of, I told you guys about trends. Now I'm going to teach you how to identify those trends. So what I'm trying to implement here is that okay. What I'm trying to tell you here, guys, is that okay. Um, look at this. So, um, each and every single trend, each and every single trend. Let me just write here, not a bit. Each and every single trend needs to have two touches at the resistance, and then two touches where at the support level. This is the rule that we we were implying here. Each and every single trend needs to have two touches at the resistance, and then two touches where at the support level. You understand? It's as simple as that. And then the third touch of that trend, of that um trend, yeah, it's either the market is going to respect that zone or give us a breakout. Simple. So we have first touch at the resistance. Second, first touch at the support, second touch at the resistance, second touch at the support, then third touch is either the market is going to do what? Respect that zone or give us a breakout. So now, one thing that you, you need to know, do not forget the properties of each and every single trend. You need to, do not forget the properties of each and every single trend because of, if you do forget the properties of those trends, you're not going to understand where the breakout is going to occur, why the breakout needs to occur that zone. You understand? So kindly do not forget the breakout of those trends. Okay, example number one. Example number one. Example number one, it's simple. Look at this. So now we have what? We have the overall direction of the market as a downtrend. And downtrend forms what? An uptrend. You understand? So we have a structure like this. So now, look at this. We're gonna have this guy here. We're gonna have this guy here. We're gonna have this guy here. Then we're gonna have him here. Understand? So now, what's happening here is that okay. We have your first touch at the support, first touch at the resistance, second touch at the support, then second touch at the resistance. Understand? This is what we call a valid trend. Why are we saying that? We have two touches where at the resistance, we have two touches where at the support, which means this zone here, correct. That's your valid trend. Mm. 
my dear guys to touch is at the resistance to touch the support the third touch of the market here it's that the market will do what give you a nice beautiful breakout to the downside or oh, a respect which means the market needs to do what buy your entry point will only come away at the third touch which means you're gonna start entering here you are either gonna enter what a respect or a breakout that's how simple it is we're not predicting the market we're letting the market tell us where it's gonna go you understand that's how simple it is and then the market will do what come and create that here guys you know this is a downtrend forming what an uptrend which means you're looking for what break out of sales. So never expect the market to do what? To break to the upside or unless it's fundamentals, it's a pattern or there's a strong support level at its own within bigger time frames. You understand? So now automatically we're looking for what? For selling breakout. You understand? Which means that, okay, the third touch of this chart here, the market will do what? Will respect the zone and then push to the downside. You understand? So now it's going to create what? The fourth touch. You, you only enter from where three going to the upside. You understand? Even if the market will grade the 10th touch, as long as it respects your trend, you have to wait for the breakout. You understand? So you can come here, create the fourth. When you create the fourth, you're looking for what? A break or respect. It doesn't break, it goes, come here, create fourth. You understand? Till it does what gives you the breakout, maybe at feet or ninth or any number. You understand? But note that, okay, you, your breakout will only come probably after the third touch. Instead, or even at the third touch, can even break at the zone here. Can even break at the zone here. Instead, so you identify a valid trend, which is one and two, and then after that you wait for the breakout or a retest. I mean, a respect where at the support zone. I mean, at the third touch, it can be at the support or at the resistance. If it respects, you go with it. If it breaks, you break out with it. That's how simple it is. So you have a structure like this now. So you identify this guy like this. You need to touch here. So you have one, one, two, then two. Then you're coming to do what? Create three. The market creates three. It's either going to do what? Break or do what? Respect. You need to, it respects coming to create what? Three. Then it bounces to come create where? Four. Then let's say that the market breaks at where? At four. So you respect at where? At three. That's how simple this thing is. That's how simple this guy is. You understand? So that's about it within the literal. If you have any questions now, you can ask. Because I'm going to be moving to waves. Okay, I'll talk about waves now. So a valid trend, it's a trend that has two touches at the resistance, two touches at the support. We have a breakout um, after the third touch or at the third touch, you need to, the third touch of our market is either a respect or a breakout, you need to, which means you need to be patient with the market. You need to, that's how simple this thing is. So you know that okay, an uptrend market moving to the upside, it has its own properties. This is where the breakout is going to occur. So how do I identify an uptrend using a very trend rules? Simple. I'm building you guys. Okay, so let's move on now. Let's move into waves. So we have different types of waves within the market. We have what you call an impulsive wave. And we have what you call a correctional wave. Then these are the two waves that we have. An impulsive wave, I normally refer it as a what? A breakout wave. And then a correctional wave is an opposite. Opposite trend. Or opposing or opposite wave. That's how simple it is. A breakout wave is an impulsive wave. Correctional wave, it's that.
So yeah, that's how this thing is. So let me explain this guys to you. Okay. So since you're the, you know that the market is moving, you say okay, the market is moving to the upside, it's moving to the downside, moving to the upside, and the market does what? Pushes to this. You understand? So here, you understand? This is our impulse here. This is our correction. This is our impulse. This is our correction. This is our impulse. You understand? Then we go back to our thing. That side we had what? TCT. A trend creates a trend. This side is a WCW. A wave creates a wave. You understand? An impulse creates a correction. Then a correction creates an impulse. That's how simple it is. So yeah, guys, that's about it. That's about it. That's about it. That's about it. So yeah, let's talk about this guys now. An impulsive wave created a correctional wave. A correctional wave created an impulsive wave. An impulsive wave created a correctional wave. A correctional wave created an impulsive wave. That's how simple it is. An impulse creates a correction, a correction creates an impulse. Simple as A B C. Okay, so now let's 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 get into this thing. Now you guys know what you guys know that okay, you have an impulse and then you have a correction within the market. Something wrong. You have an impulse and you have a correction within the market. But the question you should ask yourself is how do you trade these things? How do you trade correction now and impulsive wave? This keyboard is killing me. So yeah, that's the question you should ask yourself. So there are some things that you need to do, that you need to know. The first thing that you need to know is that okay, um, you need to identify your major trend. Okay, let me say overall trend. Second thing that you need to do is that okay, you need to identify your what? You need to identify your okay, impulse and correction. You need to identify your take profit. You also need to identify your breakout. Um, yeah, yeah, support and resistance. You understand? These are the things that you need to identify. So automatically, whenever you use this rule, you need to remember the properties of a trend. Simple. So yeah, let's 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 get into business now. So as you can see here, that okay, we have a beautiful zoom like this, something like this now. Then we have a zoom like this. So what happens to you is that okay, identify what the overall direction of the market, where is the market going? It's moving where to the upside. You understand? So after that, what do you do? You identify your impulse and correction. This is your impulse movement, and this is your correction movement. You understand? 
So an impulse is our screen that is Then after that, what do you do? You get into fire support temper system. This is how you get into fire support temper system. Using this, if you, the way I told you, so which means here you have what? Your valid thing, your valid trend. You apply that valid trend here. Then you apply the valid trend rule at this area, which means you need to have what two touches at the resistance and two touches at the support. And after that, what do you do? Get into for the take profit. The take profit is where the market change is directing for the first time. Which means this is your take profit here. This is your TP, and then your breakout here at the zone. Then you have your breakout at the zone here, which means Overall direction done, impulse and correction done, take profit done, breakout done, support and resistance done. You apply team at this zone here. You understand? So it's an impulsive movement because of it comes from where a correctional movement. So it's a whenever you have a breakout of a correction, know that okay, we are introduced to impulsive movements. That is why I'm saying that okay. WC W, a wave creates a wave. You understand? So whenever you see an up uh, uh, the market changing its direction after buying for a period of time, you know that it's creating what? A correctional wave, you understand? That's how simple it is. So whenever you see the market buying and then you change the direction, this is your correctional wave. You understand? That's how simple this thing is. We talked about the other one. I think that's something like this. So this is your overall direction of the market. It's a what? It's a downtrend. You understand? Which means you need to remember the TCT rule. And then you have your what? You have your impulse. You have your correction, then you have what your impulse. This means that after that, what do you do? Identify your support and resistance. This one here, then you take profit where, where the market changes in that chain for the first time. And then after that, what do you have? You have a breakout at this point. And then you take profit here at this zone. This is your what? Your resistance. This is your support. This guy needs to have two touches to be valid. Two touches needs to be valid. Then you have your breakout, which means this is your enter point. That's how simple this content is, guys. So WCW and impulse creates a correction. That correction, you identify the support and resistance within it. You look for the breakout. After looking for the breakout within this guy, you can hold this trade to where it is the take profit, where you take profit, where the market changes the direction for the first ever time. Welcome to trading, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, that's about it within your impulsive and correctional movements. That's about it within your impulsive and correctional movements. Don't worry, guys. We're gonna have a session where I'm going to be strictly moving to where to our charts. You understand? So what I want to introduce you guys here is pattern. Market structure is going to be more about me introducing you to those things. Patterns. You understand? I don't use a lot of patterns, guys. So I only have a few patterns. I have um, a double top. Double bottom. And then uh, we have a wedge from head and shoulders. Yeah, these are my only patterns that I use. These are the major patterns I use. These are the major patterns I use. I've been using this product long time. Yeah. So double top, double bottom, wedge. Head and shoulders, you know them. I'm going to explain them, don't worry. So yeah, just write them down. Double top, double bottom, wedge, head and shoulder. Simple. Simple, 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 please.
So yeah, let's get into this guys. Um, let's have the word double top. So yeah, you'll hear your mentor telling you that okay, you have a double top. Um, I'm expecting you guys to enter here. Um, yeah, your second entry point will be here, and then you enter again, guys. This is this is this is this is fucked up. This is bad, guys. Yeah, this is bad. You understand? I'm teaching you guys to kill the markets now. I'm teaching you guys. I'm opening your eyes now. Let's watch. Sorry about that. Let let, let me teach you something. Look at this. Before a double top is being created, let me just do this. Before a double top is being created, you need to look at this thing first. This over here. You need to break it down into two pieces. You understand? You need to break it down into two pieces. I want to teach you something important. Yes, we have a resistance level here. But there's something th that I want to teach you here. There's something powerful that I want to teach you guys here. Look at this. We do have a structure like this now. But then, before a double top was created, before you even saw that the market would create a double top, what happened? The market did what? Push to the upside, right? Then I told you guys that okay, whenever you see the market pushing to the downside, what is it creating? A correctional wave, which means you draw your support and resistance here, right? Then you wait for the breakout, catch the breakout at this zone. Then you take profit this way at this zone here. You take profit at this zone. You need them. You ate for the first time. So now your mentors should be telling you what you can enter at the zone. Guys, it's risky to enter at the zone because of if this trend is strong, the market will continue doing what? Pushing to the upside. You understand? It can correct at the zone a little bit, then continue pushing to the upside. You understand? Create a little bit of a correctional wave at the zone, then push to the upside. So now what you do is that as my student is that you wait for the market to do what? Push to the downside. When you see push to the downside, what do you have? You have what you call a neckline at the zone here. A neckline is a breakout zone. A neckline is a breakout zone. So after having a neckline at the zone here, what will happen is that okay, I'm expecting your entry points to be here. That this is the safest way you can end. You have your entry points at the zone here. Then you swing the market way to the downside. You understand? Because of you'll die, you'll have something like this. You understand? Your mentor told you that okay, you have a confirmed double top. You need to push to the downside now. This is fake. It will push to the upside and you'll die and you'll come back after that. And they'll tell you that, okay, um, it is just a fake breakout. It's not a fake breakout. Wait and let the market tell you what it needs to do. Automatically, when you have something like this, automatically you can see that, okay, we have an impulse, correction, correction at the zone, then there's your impulsive movements here. This is your impulse, correction, impulse, correction, impulse. That's how simple it is. You understand? So this basically means that, okay, it's a double top because of what? We have two touches. We have what? We have a neckline where? We have a neckline at the zone here. This is our neckline here. Which means your entry points are supposed to be here, are supposed to be here. You understand? Avoid enter. Yes, you can enter here, but it's always risky. You are advised that you can enter the zone. But unless you can see that, okay, this is a monthly time frame or weekly time frame, the market can break the zone. Yeah, now you can go. But most are advised you to enter away at the breakout of this thing. And it's also simple. Let me show you something. I could have a double, double top is from like this. Teach yourself, like I'm teaching you to. Break things down to the downside. Like you need to break things down. Look at this. It's an impulse correction, impulse, right? That's it. But once you break out the structure from here, this structure here, this is what you have. You have something like this. You understand? So this is an impulse correction, impulse. Then the market continue pushing to the downside. This zone here, this zone here. This is your impulse correction and impulse. Understand? So teach yourself to break down the markets with impulsively and fractional movements. These are the things that people won't teach you. They'll tell you that okay, we have a double top, you're looking for this breakout, but they won't be honest with you. Which means that okay, if you have something like this, you can identify this structure here. For those of you that want to enter snipe, you can enter at this breakout here. Then you push it to the side, take profit hit. Now we're at the neckline, you re-enter, then go down with the markets. That's how simple this thing is. Welcome to MCV and Nasdaq Ninjas Mentorship, ladies and gentlemen. Wake up. We're here to work. We are here to work now. Confusion will be here. Everything will be here. A double bottom. Double bottom is a structure like this. So you have a structure like this. This is what you have. You understand? If you look at the double bottom properly, what are we having? We have an impulsive movement here. 
is your impulse is your correction. You understand? So basically what's happening is that okay, you identify this guy like this. You understand? Then take profit where? Take profit at the zone. Take profit has been what? Has been smashed. Now the market fails to do what? To break the zone here. What does it do? Push it to the upside. I'm expecting your entry point to be where? At the breakout of um this guy here. Because of sometimes the market won't break. It can also create what? A pet a can create um something like this here. That's what it can do. Understand? So wait for the breakout to confirm, then you can have a sell. Understand? There are a lot of things that you need to look at the look in the market. But then other than that, that's what you have. You enter here because of it's a confirmed double bottom. And then for those of you that are creative, it's an impulse correction, impulse and correction. I mean, yeah, these are impulse correction and impulse, which means take profit here. Now, when you identify this zone here, something like this. Yeah, so this means this is your impulse correction in. Oh, no, this is wrong. This is your yeah impulse, then your correctional movement, then your impulse. Then you guys are gonna be confused, but then it's fine. You get this. I want you to look at the structure properly. It's something like this, right? So we have impulse, correction, impulse. That's it. But now if you identify this zone here, this one is knowing the double bottom. This will impulse, correction, and impulse. So we identify the structure here. Enter here for sniper, take profit, then re enter at this breakout, which means you can identify something like this again here, then have a breakout. Then. But this way it confuses you, but then try to kill it this way. Enter at the neckline. That's how simple I want it to be for you. If you are brave enough, you can enter here. So, yeah, that's about it. Our two double, bot double top and double bottom. So, now let's focus on a new thing. Our new thing will be what? Our head and shoulder. Our oh, beautiful head and shoulders. Look at this thing, guys. They'll tell you that okay, you need to draw something like this here and then draw something like this here. That's what they'll tell you. It's a lie. Look at this. Break things down. Before this thing was created, draw a line here like this. We have this zone and this zone here. It's an impulse, correction, impulse. To take profit, what? Hit. Then if a breakout way, at the neckline. Yeah, then the market does what that's what i'm telling you that sometimes you won't be a double top you won't push your downside it will break the zone and then your mentors are telling you about the double top it's fake wait for the market to tell you what it needs to do then follow what the market needs you to do that's how simple it should be if the market goes where you create the head normally i don't enter at the head i let the market do what changes that into the to the downside automatically this is your impulse then in case what your correction you do the same thing take profit hit at the zone maybe in color then the breakout at the neckline, then push it downside to take. So it's an impulse, correction, then impulse, then the head, then your what you what your impulse here, your correction at the zone, then you have your impulse here, then the neckline, then the breakout. That's how simple it is. So how do you trade the head and shoulder? Trade the head and shoulder, trade it like this. So we have the what? Right now, movements here. We have 15 minutes, which is quite good because we are almost done with our sessions. So. Okay. I'm not going to do anything, guys. I'm going to lie. I'm not going to gonna, gonna show the proof or anything. This is your impulse. This is your correction. And this is your impulse. The breakout of the impulse, creating a head. After creating a head, Automatically, when you push your downside, that's a correct, that's a downtrend, which means an impulse, a correction, wait for the breakout, enter TP here, and then you have what breakout, then you re enter again. Instant. But someone out there will be telling you that you need to throw a trend line like this, which is useless. I don't see the use of throwing a trend line that comes to the zone because of the market sometimes won't come to the zone, but unless it's steady, once it's steady like this, now it's possible for you to throw a horizontal line. You touch and move. The only time you can catch it through what? A fractional wave and impulsive movements. Simple. The same thing with the downside one, something like this. So, yeah, this is your impulse, your correction, your impulse, your head, 
uh, impulse, you know, correction, general impulse, which means structure, high profit, head, structure, high profit, breakout, neckline, entry point, fly with it. Hmm. Interesting. So yeah, welcome to new wedges now. We have wedge now. We have what we call what a bullish wedge and a bearish wedge. So let me just take, think about it, you guys. The time, guys. Once you hit the time, you know the breakouts will come the time. So this is a bullish wedge. It's a bullish wedge. This is what a bearish wedge. Understand? So the wedge it starts really huge. It starts being huge and then end up being small. So you have something like this. Understand? So now we have what a bullish wedge because of what the breakout is what it's a bullish one. It's a bullish wedge. So automatically, the only way for you to cheat this thing is when you do what you impulsive with is your impulse, is your correction, and you're looking for breakout impulse, then you have your what take profit at the highest one. You see? Simple. Don't stress yourself. The same thing, market enters here and leaves here. And after that, you have your impulse, your correction, and your impulse take profit at the same. Normally, after you take profit, I swing it to the upside. I swing it to the downside too. That's about it, guys, from me. That's about it from your boy, the middle JPY. Yeah, what a session, what a session. I can feel my soul just now. I'm a bit tired now, I'm a bit tired, but we still have one more session. And after that, we'll be done. This session, the upcoming session is going to be within charts. No one's in the Samsung guy. So, yeah. That's how things are done here on MTV. That's how things are done here. Where on MTV for Association, what are you? Hope you guys, hope you guys learned a lot. Hope you guys learned a lot. Hope you guys saw a lot. If you have any questions you can ask, we have five minutes remaining. So no questions, no nothing from you guys. Can you continue to the next session? And was this session a session that you had a lot from me? Did you guys learn something from me? Because if I can't continue without knowing that it was this a session that was a particular session or what? Okay, so I'm going to. Yeah, we understood. Thank you very much. Okay, fruitful session. Thank you. Guys. Um, we're having a session next session, our last session for today. Then yeah, I'm going to end this session. We're gonna join the next session. Then yeah, I'm going to end this session now. Mm -hmm.